we have been <clears throat> and we will remain ready for real, honest debate on security challenges facing this nation. There are lots of them. That's why last year we rolled out a comprehensive national security plan. Sadly, the bill the Republican leader wants to bring to the floor would not keep us safer. You can name legislation anything you want, but a name doesn't mean much. As Junior Senator from Arizona said, this bill, the one that's on the floor, or the Republican leader wants on the floor, is, quote, intended to knock out all refugee entrants, and I'm not there, close quote. So says Jeff Flake. This bill is just another step in the absolute wrong direction, the direction of Don Trump. Democrats are committed to opposing the hateful views of Trump and his Republican enablers. <clears throat> That's why Democrats have provided alternative votes on real policies that would make America safer. We think it's past time for senators to do their job and vote on the floor for important issues. So we wanted to offer a few amendments. Let's start with four. Denounce Donald Trump's reprehensible policy to have a religious test on those people that can come to America. We want to close the terrorist gun loophole. We want to dra dramatically increase funding for local law enforcement and their anti-terrorist activities. They're overworked, under-resourced. We want to make sure airport security is such that we feel good about their, their ability to protect us. And we want to make sure that we had an opportunity to offer the Democratic anti-ISIS security bill. These are all very important issues. We think they're real issues and not uh, fake issues. The Republican leaders pledged over and over again that the Republican and Senate would have a, an amendment process, an open amendment process. But we're, we're asking only at this stage for votes on four amendments. That's not unusual. He said, my friend um, Senator McConnell said, quote, should, people should also know that where we stand on the issues of the day, regardless of whether the majority leader thinks these issues are worth debating or not. He was talking about me. And if Republicans are fortunate enough to be in the majority, they will next year have an open amendment process. So if Senate Dem Republicans, I'm sorry, are prepared to abide by this commitment, Senate Democrats are prepared to advance these important debates. This is something we need to do. And I've sadly, I've heard, um, in the caucus, we got word that Senator Cornyn had said that um, we weren't letting them go on the bill. We want them to go on the bill. We're, we want to debate this issue. Immigration, visas, refugees, those are things we need to talk about. But we need to talk about efforts to defeat ISIS, not uh, creating more paperwork for cabinet officers. Senator Durbin. Yesterday in my office in Chicago, I sat down with Syrian refugees. The same Syrian refugees who are being characterized as would-be terrorists on the floor of the United States Senate. I wish my colleagues could have been there to meet these families, to hear what they have been through. A woman who barely speaks a few words of English talks about her husband being killed by a sniper. She took her little girl and ran from their city and went to Damascus, waiting for an opportunity to leave. She filed for refugee status and went through a year and a half of background checks before she and her daughter could make it to the city of Chicago. Her daughter is now a freshman in high school, beautiful young woman. What they were looking for was not an opportunity to terrorize. They were looking for an opportunity to live, to leave war-torn Syria. I don't understand why the Republicans in the Senate and the Republican presidential candidates have declared war on these poor refugees. I don't understand why they ignore the fact that these people are going through closer scrutiny, more investigations, more questions, and more delays than any visitors to the United States from any other country. Our war is not with Syrian refugees. Our war is with ISIL and terrorists and those who are using this country's freedoms to kill innocent people. And for us to turn our back on these refugees is plainly wrong. The bill before us sounds so innocuous. A pause. Give me a break. Read it. 
what it calls on is the head of the FBI to stop doing whatever Mr. Comey is doing today to protect America and each day to sift through 100 applications for Syrian refugees. Then the Director of National Intelligence, instead of gathering intelligence around the world to keep us safe, sifts through another 100 applications a day. And then Jay Johnson as Director of the Department of Homeland Security. This is not a pause. It's not reasonable. It's unfair. We have given them an alternative, amendments that address real issues. They are so smitten by the Republican presidential candidates they can't wait to bring a Syrian refugee bill to the floor. But when we offer them a chance to vote on another statement by a Republican presidential nominee, Mr. Trump, about excluding people because of religion from the United States, they run like scalded cats. Well, the bill the Republicans are trying to pass this week misses the mark when it comes to keeping America safe. Our enemy isn't refugees, it's ISIS. We should be focused on securing our homeland and taking the fight to ISIS overseas. That's what our amendments seek to do. Right now, people on the ter terrorist watch list can not only get a gun or buy explosives, they can also get a license to handle radiological material. We ought to prevent suspected terrorists from getting their hands on the material to make a dirty bomb. They've talked about dirty bombs. They refuse to allow an amendment on that issue. We ought to prevent terrorists. We ought to improve airport security. We all know we have to make it tougher. We've seen all the reports. We need to fund DHS efforts to stop homegrown extremism. We need to improve our ability to intercept terrorist communications. These are all things our amendments would have done. And we said to our Republican colleagues, yeah, you want to have a vote on yours, which we don't think makes America any more secure? Let's vote on ours, which we think get to the heart of the matter in terms of protecting us. And of course, they said no. We also provide investments for our state and local police departments to protect our country from terrorists. So in short, Republicans are taking their eye off our security with this bill. But Democrats want to train the fight where it is, directly at ISIS. We ought to have a chance to make this bill worth passing. Time and time again, as Harry said, Leader McConnell pledged to allow votes on amendments, amendments to improve bills, amendments dealing with issues of the day, even amendments that are tough political votes. He has said he's willing to take them all. But I guess too many of his members don't really want to vote on these amendments because it splits their party. It shows the direction that they want to go in. It shows that they'd support the NRA over protecting us on terrorism. They're afraid. And so we couldn't get these amendments on the floor. Republicans should honor their pledges and guarantee Democrats votes on our amendments. Senator Murray. There is actually nothing more important that we do here than our work to make sure that our families are protected from those who want to do us harm. The threat from terrorism is real and it's serious. And we need to do everything we can to fight back and keep our country safe. We absolutely do need to make sure that dangerous people cannot get into our country, and we should always be looking for better ways to do that, but this Republican bill is the wrong approach. We can stop terrorists without compromising our values, and we do not need to slam the door on women and children and families who are fleeing horrific violence to keep our homeland safe. So that is why we were urging Republican leaders to simply open up the Senate floor and allow us to have votes on amendments that will actually make a difference in protecting our families from terrorists. We should be doing everything we can to prevent terrorists from getting guns and dangerous materials that can be used for explosive devices. We should be investing in our own homeland security and in our first responders. We should be increasing support for our allies fighting ISIL overseas. And we should always be making sure our armed forces have the tools and resources they need to strike terrorists wherever they are. Those are just a few of the issues we should be working on here in the Senate to fight terrorists and protect our families. We'll take some questions. Uh, stock markets are down big today. 
their fears of a global recession in the states. I haven't had a chance to look at it. Do you think it's time for another hold on a second. Wow, no, it's gone. Hey, it's not. Bit. Last time I looked, 600 it's only 384 now. Okay, so so do we? Do you, do you think we want another uh, stimulus? Is that what you said? I I, th I I think it's far too early to start speculating on what we should do the next uh, month or so in that regard. Now I should say a few weeks. Uh, we know that oil prices are low. We know that China's economy is still growing, but. Uh, lowest rate since a quarter of a century ago. So I think we just have to be a little bit deliberate. Our economy is doing pretty good, you know, creating a lot of jobs, but because of what's happening in China around the rest of the world, we're certainly concerned about what's going on here. So the Fed's looking at it. Uh, I think we as members of Congress should just be very calm at this stage, wait for some more direction as to what's going to happen worldwide in the next few weeks. Uh -huh. Yesterday, the Supreme Court said they would take up the executive actions on immigration. Mm -hmm. um, even if the Supreme Court does uphold the actions in, in June, mm -hmm. are you concerned that um, the administration would have enough time to just simply implement the program, especially considering mm -hmm. the, the <coughs> rhetoric from the presidential trail about how they would end this program? The program was ready to be implemented until this rogue judge in Texas uh, did something that uh, even the Supreme Court said, this is an issue they're bringing up that hasn't been heard uh, in uh, maybe a hundred years in the Senate, I mean in the Supreme Court. So I think the, I think the judge in Texas, I think the uh, appellate court is wrong and I think the Supreme Court recognized that. I think there's a, really a significant chance of prevailing. Most all legal scholars, conservative and uh, more progressive, believe that. So if, it, if the decision comes down late in June, there will be plenty of time to implement it. And it will be great relief to lots of people in America, about four million to be exact. Yes? And perhaps the minority as well. I'm wondering if your reaction to the CEO deficit projections and whether or not you think that will impact that number of projects. The deficit went down last year. It's up a little bit now. It's going to they have projected to be up now a little bit. Why? Because um, we did tax cuts and increased spending. That's a couple of the reasons. But I don't want to. I, I believe that um, the finality that we gave to the American people, the biz business community, middle class and poor people, with what we did late last year, is extremely important to the overall growth of this country in the year, year or two to come, because there's. There's stability. We know uh, that some of these programs, tax programs, they can do them in the out years. With renewable energy, that's a program that'll go on for seven more years. It's, I believe that uh, this is a blip. I believe the economy, if, we, if China handles their problems a little bit better than what they have, I think the economy is going to be on fire for what we did late last year. Have you uh, thought as to whether or not this Trump uh, related amendment that uh, you're apparently not going to be able to offer on this uh, current legislation if you're going to bring that back up on the energy bill and on subsequent uh, legislation? <clears throat> what, what, what I personally am tired of is the Republicans saying one thing and doing another. Um, as was seen last year, we're in the minority, but we, we have been a constructive minority. We have worked with them to get things done. The bills that we pass here with rare exception are things that should have been done years ago and they would have been had they not blocked those bills. So what we're saying now, they said we're going to have an amendment process here. We want to have an amendment process. And we didn't say we want amendments that go on for weeks at a time as they told us. But we said we have four amendments that we want to talk about right today. We want to have votes on those amendments. That sounds, when someone's got an open amendment process, be a pretty easy way, uh, easy road to go down, but obviously they've refused to do that. And the point is this, we are no longer just going to march down there and uh, oppose everything just to be opposing it. We want to continue being constructive the way we have been and as we are in this legislation. Okay. Thanks, everybody.